Well, when last we looked at the Garden Railroad, we had just finished putting in the Yagas Creek switches. Right, it was looking good. Yeah, and running really fine. Uh, Mike made these for us over at Yagas Creek, and oh my gosh, they're just... They're wonderful. They are. They're and, beautiful. And it's great to have trains just running smoothly out here again. This has turned out really pretty. I mean, we've got like a bumper crop of grapes and the trellis looks so nice. You know, there's a lot of weight up here. Oh, there is. And fortunately, we designed all the trellis and everything to handle the weight and thrilled by this just amazing, amazing quantity of grapes up here. Yeah, it's our own Napa Valley right here. Well, as things usually go, we had a lot of other things going on and we hadn't been over here in about a week. And when we got here, we noticed that the lawn was kind of drying out. Like, what in the world? Because we have it on an automatic sprinkling system. Which is an online thing that right. connects to the internet. And every once in a great while, like all online things, the whole thing craps out. Yes. And so I thought, well, I'll just have to reboot it, only to find that the reason it was offline is because there was no power going to the shed anymore. Right, and the lawn was pretty dry. So we need to find out what's going on. And I, I went to the breaker panel, and the breaker was tripped. Oh. So maybe something in the shed, so we just started uh, unplugging things. Right, power equipment, anything that was plugged in, including the sprinkling system. And nothing. It was all still dead. Uh, it was shorted out somewhere in the electrical wiring. Yes, and to try to locate where that would be. The problem is the 110 power uh, runs along the back side of the lattice work. Right, right from the panel, like the bathroom area on over, so we've got to figure out just where. And in inspecting the installation, we didn't do the installation, we hired that done, but as we started inspecting the wiring where it's mounted to the the grape lattice, it was a disaster. Yes, I'm looking at these staples going, oh, what could have gone wrong right here? Yeah, maybe could that be our short circuit? Uh, somewhere. Although we found like 10 or 12 places just like this. Exactly. And other places where the grapevines had cut into the wire. You know, grapevines, are, they can dig Man, right into things. I wouldn't think so, but they sure can. And they cut right into the insulation in several places. So it's like, I think what we're going to have to do is just abandon the whole wiring mm -hmm. and redo the entire wiring all the way from the junction box to the, uh, the other end yeah, of the there, junction box. Yeah, there's another junction box. Just part of that branch circuit, we was able to find out where it was shorting, was able to isolate it, but uh, that's all got to be replaced or changed or something. Now the lanterns and the overhead lighting, the wiring's gonna have to be up here. Right. But that's all 12 volt lighting. Right. Moreover, it's out away from where the grapes are cutting into it and none of that wiring has proven to be a problem. So no. that's just gonna stay like it is. Right. So at this point, we decided the line that went to the storage house, there was continuity in the circuit. So there wasn't a short here. So that's where I decided to start with a brand new outlet box. So this guy was uh, the original install, but it was still in good shape, and I figured we'd just rewire it, pull all the wires out of it, and start over and save it. The price of these things is unbelievable. Well, the first thing we had to do was stretch a new piece of uh, outdoor-rated Romex underneath the layout so the grapes can't get to it, down here with all of the layout wiring. And that meant uh, the two of us crawling around on the ground. You know, I never knew that 50 feet could be so long at 16 <laughs> inches. Uh, 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 yikes. Yikes, yeah. yeah. I'm going through and drilling all these holes, and that wire doesn't just pull right through. No, it is stiff as a board. And boy, uh, if, if somebody would have seen us doing this, it could have been comedy. Yeah, e easy. easy. We, we didn't film it because we have some amount of pride left. Well, that and yeah, and we have to bleep out about half of it. <laughs> anyway, as you can see, we got the Romex down here with the rest of the wiring. 
and everything is, is color coded and uh, there's a data line down here and track buses and low voltage and now there's also uh, our high voltage line running through here as well. Now I don't profess to be a master electrician but I have dabbled in it a little bit so I decided to wire up this box. And first of all, I'm tightening the strain relief, and then I'm going to start sorting out the wires and stripping them. And do we have those heavy pliers? Did I just have them? I did. We better hope this works. <laughs> well, it looks good. <clears throat> So working with this wire was really tough to do because it's some heavy wire. So I just got done connecting the ground wire and uh, now I'm putting on the neutral wires. Now I don't like to use the stab back connections because they to me just don't make a really tight connection, especially outdoors. So I just do the little shepherd hooks and uh, do the terminals on either side of the outlet. It's kind of wire you about have to apply some brute force to it it's so stiff it's such heavy wire and this wire just happens to be 12 gauge so yes it is really difficult to work with so it's on a 20 amp breaker which is protected inside the garage and it's just part of a branch circuit so if you see me not using a ground fault well there's one farther up the line get slammed in there. Can you get me? Yeah. The, the high art of screwing around comes in a lot of flavors. Yeah, that's shocking. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes the weird things you have to do to build a model railroad, I'll oh, tell you what. Oh, no kidding. That's an easy one. Yeah. <laughs> now one of the stupidest things about my original design is I put these on the back side thinking that they'd be out of sight and out of mind, but it also means you can't get to them. Well, especially with 50,000 pounds of grapes growing over them. <laughs> now they're easily accessed right from the front. Yes. And they look just fine. Oh, good. Now this was the challenging one because this uh, outlet box happens to have two sets of outlets or a duplex. So trying to connect everything up in this box sometimes can be a little bit tricky. We've used these double duplexes throughout the garage and in places in our house. You know, having plug strips and, and that sort of thing is really, I think it just should be the all new construction. Instead of having just two plugs, you should always have four. Right, I really like the idea. If I was to build a house, every room would have these. Well, one of the interesting things about wiring one of these duplex outlets is there's got to be about a bazillion ways of connecting them. But I find the best way to do it is with pigtails and make sure you've got the wire nuts securely fastened on all of the connections. I do not like working with this heavy wire. One of the things I like to do with these duplexes is to wrap each receptacle with electrical tape to cover up the terminals because I have seen where something bumps inside that box and it will trip the breaker and send out a shower of sparks. So this just adds a little layer of protection. This is really awkward. Isn't that thing a pain? Fire extinguisher 
behind you. <laughs> Just in case it's hard. Well, now for the moment of truth, because I do have 911 on speed dial. I'm ready to throw the breaker. Oof. And we'll see if there's a shower of sparks or if we have power. Yes. One or the other. Here, here we go. Here, here, here goes nothing. Well, it didn't blow. Nope, didn't trip. That's a good sign. Let's go outside and see if there's any smoke. Yep, looks good. Now for the final test. And there it is. Yep, all done with green lights across. Success. Yay. Now I'm going to head out to the tough shed and start plugging everything back in the sprinkling system and the battery charger and the low voltage power supply. And so does that mean we're online or back on track? Back on track. <laughs> Well, if you're not a subscriber to the channel, here comes your opportunity. The famous blue button. Zoink! Right there, the blue <laughs> button. Well, we're not sure how you found this video on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring. Not even shocking. Not even shocking. <laughs> we will see you here on Sunday. Bye-bye. <laughs>